Sure. So from a, from a disaster recovery standpoint, I think why cloud makes sense for a lot of people is they want DR, but they don't have the resources to maintain a separate DR facility. So, you know, it, it's always great to have that, that capability to fail over, but if you don't have another site, then you're kind of out of luck. So the cloud, in a lot of ways, makes sense for that because they can rent the resources. They can, you know, don't have to dedicate, you know, space and, and staff and all those types of things. So the cloud makes a lot of sense for DR. And when we look at, you know, what are the challenges, you know, specifically using cloud for disaster recovery, um, a lot of it comes down to, a lot of times, infrastructure, right? So we've got, you know, companies have their on-prem infrastructure, and if they're highly virtualized, how do they get that to the cloud? How do they transfer that data? And what cloud do they use? Uh, you know, a lot of the large public clouds, um, don't necessarily, don't always have the access to their infrastructure that's required to just transfer a VM whole over to that cloud platform. Uh, so one of the things that we've done is when we look at cloud and our strategy, it's really about enabling our channel and our service providers to be able to offer those Veeam powered services. So we released last year in our version 8, uh, Veeam Cloud Connect. Um, and what that does is on the serve for a service provider, um, it allows them to very quickly and easily set up a, a base amount of infrastructure to then go, after, go out to customers who may be existing Veeam customers um, or maybe you know, the, the service provider can, can offer their Veeam services as well. But it's this simple transfer of the backup data to the cloud. So kind of in that scenario, it's using the cloud to store backups, archive, and those types of things. So the next level in version 9, which will be out this fall, is all about Cloud Connect for replication and being able to take a, a, a virtual machine and replicate it to a service provider through that same infrastructure. Um, so from service provider side, it's, it's very easy to set up. Um, there, there's only one network port between, between the two that's required to be open and uh, makes it very simple and easy to set up. <laughs> so, you know, from, from, from Veeam's perspective, we're providing the software. Uh, so, and it's the service providers that are then providing the services. So, from a customer perspective, you know, they can go cheap and carefree, um, you know, where, you know, maybe they're getting it from a service provider who's running everything out of his garage, um, and maybe they're okay with that, um, or they can go up to a higher level of service. Uh, so, it's, it really allows the customer to decide what type of, of service and what kind of contract that they want from, from the cloud and from their service provider in order to offer that. Well, I mean, I think if you, you know, when you look at, you know, specifically financial institutions, right, large financial institutions, they're all going to have DR sites. Um, and they probably do, you know, and they probably swap between the sites on a month, at least monthly basis, um, or they do testing. And so, you know, for when, when you have a lot of money and you have those multiple sites, and a lot of these sites were born out before the cloud became even a reality in order to do that. Uh, so, you know, some of the large companies already have this. Um, the you know companies though that only have a single site um, or maybe they have multiple sites but they don't have the resources to dedicate you know for DR between sites um, which is you know one of the things we've been we've been promoting ever since we, we released version one backup and replication in, in one uh, but unfortunately not everyone has that that extra site or that extra capacity to replicate to for, for DR purposes. Um, so we are 100% channel. Um, we have been ever since day one, so we only sell through partners. Um, and you know, from the partner perspective, you know, the partners then sell to the customers, um, but then also service providers, right? So we also work with service providers that then provide the services to the customers as well. Um, but that's all part of the channel. And I think one of the neat things about Cloud Connect is it enables someone who may be a traditional VAR uh, to then you know, start offering mean powered services and become a service provider whether they built the infrastructure themselves or actually you know, purchased from someone else, but it's an additional revenue stream and a way for bars to get into the cloud. Um, our perfect customer is anyone. Um, you know, we, don't, we don't really differentiate. We, we, we focus on a few verticals just from a marketing perspective, um, but our, you know, if you look at our customers, we have over 145,000 customers globally, um, and they run the gamut from you know, small SMB to very large enterprises to government organizations, you know, large financial institutions. 
Um, it's really, it's anyone that has a modern data center um, and is looking at, you know, a better availability solution than what they currently have. Um, and, and one of the things that scares people about cloud is the unknown. Um, and doing business with an entity that only will work with you over the web, you know, they, they do a credit card transaction, but you, there's, you don't have anybody to call, you don't know anybody that works there, it's just, it's there, it's in the cloud. Right? Whereas from a service provider perspective and you know, regional cloud offerings, um, which is especially important in Europe, you know, they know who they're working with. They know they can call someone, they can visit the data center. And more importantly for Europe is data sovereignty. Right? The, the, the data stays within country, which is important for some companies and even for some regulations um, you know, to, to say, hey, you know what, we're in, we're in Germany and we're going to keep our data in Germany and, and use cloud services that are in Germany. Um, and even though, you know, Amazon, Microsoft, everybody has, you know, data centers in, in different countries around Europe, um, I still think there's a perception, you know, that even because they're, you know, U.S. companies, that there, there may still be some issues even though the data is apparently still in-country. In Sure, so, so version 9, uh, we actually made our first announcement about version 9 a couple of weeks ago. Um, and this is typical for what we do, is we have a new version coming up. Um, it'll be out Q3 of this year in the fall. Um, but we'll, over the spring, you know, late spring, summer, we'll talk about features, you know, kind of on an ongoing basis. And, you know, we'll have new announcements every couple of weeks. Uh, so a couple weeks ago we announced that we'll be supporting EMC, uh, VNX, and VNXC uh, primary storage uh, for snapshots. So um, that's adding on, that's adding, you know, EMC is support in addition to HP um, as well as NetApp uh, for primary storage snapshot support. Uh, we, you know, just announced yesterday that, you know, we're bringing Cloud Connect replication. Uh, we have some others um, that are coming. Um, can't talk about them yet, but, uh, you know, a lot of them are going to have, you know, th there's, there's a couple of things that we're doing um, that I think larger enterprises will be very interested in. Uh, so some, some really interesting and cool enterprise, what we call enterprise features, uh, you know, to really help us, you know, drive that enterprise market even better. So from a company perspective, you know, we're, we're a Swiss company, all of our press releases come out of Switzerland, uh, but we're, we're actually a global company. So we have offices, you know, all over the world, uh, and we've done, we've had tremendous success in Europe, um, the UK, you know, EMEA in general. So, you know, it's, 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 it's been, you know, a big reason for our success is, is Europe and EMEA. We have significant business in North America. You know, that's, that's where I live. So, <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's North America, in, you know, in general is a, is a very, very big region for us as well as, as, well as EMEA. Um, but we're also putting a lot of focus, you know, where we're looking at expansion. We're, we're doing some expansion into Asia this year. Uh, so we're, we're opening some, some larger operations and new offices, you know, across uh, Southeast Asia um, and also Latin America. Um, it's been a big focus for us the last couple of years is to expand, you know, our presence in, in South America, Latin America region, uh, as well as North America.